the network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV AV Nation. Nation. This is AV Nation. This is AV Week. Episode 144, recorded Friday, May 23rd, 2014. Please stand by. AV Week is brought to you by Middle Atlantic Products, who invite you to stop by their new, customer-focused website, Middle Atlantic Products, what great systems are built on. Ready. AV, AV Week. Performing scan. AV Week. Online. This is AV Week. This is AV Week, your weekly wrap-up of audiovisual news and information. My name is Tim Albright. I'm your host, and already this is the show of a thousand technical difficulties. <laughs> with us this week is Mark Lavecchia. Mark is with BMA Software Solutions. How are you, sir? I'm wonderful, sir. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, also with us is Miss AV Dawn, Dawn Mead, uh, with NetAV, and uh, a proud, well, I don't know if she's proud, but I'm proud to have her on uh, the advisory board for AV Nation. How are you, ma'am? Very good, thanks. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Last but not least, uh, Joe's a a last-minute addition. (laughs) Joe's the man. I thought I was the one that had a new boss this week. Joe's the one who has a new boss this week. Sort of, kind of. We'll explain that later. Joe's with AMX. How are you, sir? I'm doing great, Tim. A little bit tired, as you can imagine. I can imagine. Your hands and your voice and everything's got to be tired on you by now. Oh, yeah. Thousands and thousands. That's all right. It's all good. It's all good. Good, yeah. I I will say this, and we'll talk to Joe, obviously, about the AMX uh, Harmon deal. Uh, I sent an email to him, and very nice, uh, um, you know, everything's positive, and and reached out to some folks from Harmon, and they said the exact same thing. So it's kind of a neat, you know, seeing it from both sides, how how both companies are very excited about this going forward. So, um, all right, uh, real quickly, we uh, all of our all of our broadcasts, all of our uh, podcasts are brought to you by Middle Atlantic and their new customer so customer, customer focused website, Middle Atlantic Products. What great systems are built on? Easy for me to say. Good night. All right. So, if you're watching the video, uh, the handy dandy article, I could have picked one of a thousand. I picked the one from from. Uh, from Nasdaq.com simply because uh, it's not very often that AV companies get put on Nasdaq, so that was kind of cool. Harman to buy AMX for three hundred sixty-five million dollars. This came out on Tuesday. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Wednesday. Um, and and as so often happens, I mean, all of you have got you know friends who will text you from time to time. Hey, I heard this rumor. Hey, I heard that rumor. I'm driving in, into the office the other day, and I was put on some a group. Uh, text thingy, um, and uh, it was one of the the one of the AV tweets that we all uh, know and love. And uh, he says AMX is being bought by Harmon, and the first response was bull. <laughs> I'm not going to say the rest <laughs> of it, but it was it was that was the initial response. And uh, so yeah, Joe, it, it, it did did kind of come. Uh, it's just for the rest of us, obviously, it did came, come as a surprise. Uh, talk a little bit, of, you know, as much as you can about about the process, about the deal, and 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 what you guys see uh, as a, as the benefit of this uh, from Amex's side. Sure, happy to. Well, I, I can uh, share with you the surprise part because they did a wonderful job of keeping it all uh, very close. So the group of people who were involved in um, you know everything leading up to the transaction were you know real hush hush. And obviously, Harman's a big public company, so there's lots of very important that they do that. So they did a great job. And um, the fact that it was a surprise to everybody is, I, I think, is good news. Uh, you know, the folks here at AMX, very, very excited. Uh, it was a surprise to the vast majority of people here um, from a news point of view, but a very, very welcome one. So lots of, lots of energy, lots of excitement. Um, we're, you know, right now we're in the quiet period or the, the, the pre-close period, I should yeah. say. Um, so there's, you know, still a lot that, has yet to be decided, a lot to be discussed that really can't be talked about until after the closing. Um, but, uh, you know, whatever we can talk about now, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted to do it. Just uh, real excited. Well, and some of that is um, you, you, this is not the, the, first, I mean, the first time that AMX has, has traded hands. 
It, yes. It, this is also, but the last couple times it's been more of a, um, a privately held uh, trust or, a, or an investment yeah. group. This is this is a recent development for you guys to be held by a publicly traded company. Is there anything yes. that, as much as you can talk about, obviously, mm-hmm. how will that be different? You know, being you know stockholders as opposed to you know a, a trust or an investment group, or is it the same thing? Well. You know, there's there's a lot of ways in which it's going to be similar now, and, and it obviously affects different people in different ways. To the to the rank and file, it's really not going to be all that much different. Um, the Duchess Wa family was uh, very private in um, the way they handled and disclosed information about their portfolio companies. So, uh, even relative to a public company, there was probably even more discretion with uh, holding information close. So. Um, Obviously, as part of a much, much larger public entity, your visibility into what's exactly going on AMX in particular may not may not be improved a whole lot, um, because we, we probably aren't going to be disclosed separately. But uh, you know, time will tell. That really isn't a decision that that I'm party to. Um, I don't think it's going to affect a lot of the way we conduct our business. I do think you're right. It is a very different family to be grouped in with because uh, before we were bought more or less as a sort of independent entity and a company uh, now we're part of a portfolio of AV brands yeah so um, who knows how exactly that's going to roll out but it's certainly the the opportunity for it to be a little bit different is is clearly there uh, I'm gonna take it around the horn for uh, for the other two AV professionals we have on our group because uh, I've got some questions but but I'm sure they do as well the first thing uh, mark we'll talk we'll talk with you first uh, Mark BMA Solutions is Software Solutions is an independent uh, uh, programming house, um, correct. And and someone I have a, a, a the, or the type of company I have an awful lot of love for right now. With me, you know, starting with Innoved this week, same exact company. Mark's on the on the Mark gets to surf and I get to suffer through winters. Uh, right. I, I'm in the Midwest <laughs> and he's in California. So, right. Um, but but talk a bit a bit about. Um, AMX and and this transition, you know, Joe's right. They have been you know part of a of a of a you know small little investment, not small, but a, a, an investment company, and now they're going to be in a portfolio of other AV companies. How important is that? Well, I I probably take it from a different angle, not just from a controls programming standpoint, but um, I spent most most all of my career in AV at a manufacturer. And so what I look at is from a manufacturing standpoint, uh, what is this going to mean to the markets that they into right now? Um, the first thing that popped into my head when I saw it was it is, how would I, if I'm your competitor, how do I look at it? And I, I hope that doesn't make you, you know, uncomfortable, but that's always the way that I look at it from a sales and a marketing perspective. If I'm one of your competitors, how am I looking at this? And the first thing that struck me was that, you know, this you're now going to be rolled into more of a, uh, a company that a group of products that are more residential, more high-end, um, consumer-related, um, and so my first question in my mind is, what does this mean to the commercial world? If I'm out there and I'm putting in these boardrooms and training rooms and so forth, uh, now all of a sudden I find out that you know I'm going into an arena that's more heavily high-end, um, consumer-related. I, I don't expect you to have an answer to that right now, right? But, that's yeah. the first thing that hit my head, and I suppose that's one of the first things you're going to get calls on, or at least from the commercial yeah. world. Well, you know, you know, obviously we have businesses in both the residential and the commercial side, so we're getting right. we're getting a lot of questions from both sides, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, now, it, it, you know, in terms of a little bit of insight into that is, you know, Harman has three distinct business units. It's got a lifestyle group, which is all of its residential products. Uh, it has the um, infotainment group, which is largely dedicated to audio systems and automobiles and other systems right. and automobiles. Yeah. And then there's a the professional group. And so we were actually acquired by the professional group okay. within Harman. So that's a little bit of insight into that um, question about what about the commercial businesses. Yeah, we are part of a brand of a company that has a, a tremendously strong portfolio for the residential sector, but it does have a very very strong position in the professional sector as well, and that's the group with which we'll be um, incorporated. Well, and I would add this too, that as having spent most of my life for a manufacturer, um, I've, uh, it's an exciting time and, and, and so forth, but your ear is going to get 
really tired right now <laughs> because you're, you're, the emails and the phone calls from every level of every angle of every person that's in our business is now talking about this. And uh, as from a manufacturer standpoint, I'd be like, oh, man, I can't wait for the weekend. <laughs> Even then, and it doesn't stop then either, does it? Or it's not no. going to. But that, that's okay. This is what I live for, to be honest. I mean, this is this is where I'm in the zone, and uh, okay, good. <laughs> that's my biggest problem. Then I, I'm I'm in a lucky spot. Well, can, can I ask? Okay, totally <laughs> totally uh, non sequitur here. Why in the world didn't you wait until the first day of Infocom to announce this? Seriously, you're three weeks well, out. You could have <laughs> held on to this for three stinking weeks and, and waited until June 18th and just blown everybody away. Well, again, I will say that uh, it, you'll, you'll be surprised with this, but they didn't ask my oh, opinion on the matter. <laughs> no, I, I, I actually I like uh, uh, with everybody that you know when we found out that Microsoft was moving in and we knew they were going to get all the buzz, we had to do something to get a little attention. <laughs> and, um, but no, I, I obviously the uh, I I have no real insight into how the timing worked out. What it, what does work out kind of well, however, is that. Um, if things go smoothly with the you know regulatory reviews and all of that, it's 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 possible that maybe you know we'll be close to having uh, some everything all wrapped up by Infocom. Right. So maybe it'll be you know something new there. We'll just have to see how things roll out. But uh, uh, yeah, well, the the timing is what it is. All right. all right, there's probably some SEC thingy you had to do or something. Uh, all well, right, and you know, Tim, I, yes. if I can interrupt real quickly, yeah. one of the things to, they're smart in doing this early is they've got to get their message together now for Infocom, okay? They need all of their employees that are going to be at that show, gripping and grinning with everybody, in, at, not just on the trade show floor, but at the events and so forth. They need everybody on the same page market from, from, a, from a message standpoint, mm -hmm. and if they tried to do that leading up to the show, mm -hmm it would start coming out and it would start distracting people. And, and as I, I think that they made the right move to do this before the show. It, yeah. People are going to be talking about it at the show. And there's no question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and it's also good to remind everybody that, you know, really the transaction is between the Duchess Hua group and Harmon, not AMX and Harmon. Yeah. So, because it's a wholly owned entity of the Duchess Hua group. So really much of the discussion and the timing and the decisions all around that were all likely done between those two entities. And again, they didn't ask Joe. Fools they there. did not ask me. They... Uh, Don? I'm not, I'm not insulted. No. Um, when it comes to, we, we talked about this a little bit off air, marketing these guys, right? So so now they're going to be a part of a very big, uh, a very big portfolio, a professional group, you know, we, along with, with Crown and and not the commercial line of, uh, not the residential line or, or the, the consumer line of JVL, but the big, you know, big monster um, uh, line arrays, and, and they're going to be in that group with our buddy Bradford Ben. How do you do that? You know, how do you roll in um, an automation and, and video company into a company that has primarily spent most of their, their, their life as an audio, uh, an audio company, honestly? Well, first of all, one thing is you don't make the announcement out of Infocom. I'm with, I'm with Mark on this one uh, because one of the things they're going to have to be very careful to do is they want to make sure that they're focusing on the products, mm -hmm. especially at a show like Infocom when you have your technology managers, you have your integrators, you have the people that need to buy into your product to continue pushing your product. So you don't want to alienate them by just focusing on a business transaction sale that has nothing to do with your product. You want everyone talking about the cool, sexy products at the show. So. That's one, and they did that right, so good job, even if they didn't talk to Joe. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, w when it comes to the greater marketing, you know, I don't think that there's a ton that they're going to have to change by adding the by Harmon or by Duchesois Group or w whatever, however they choose to brand it. I don't think there's going to be a ton changing other than when they're marketing the group as a whole. When they're marketing the group as a, as a whole, yeah, they're going to have to definitely change people's minds about the group as a whole to include the whole video and audio uh, automation factor when before it was just audio and cars, you know. Um, now that they're going to have to expand people's minds in that regard. But as for marketing purely the AMX stuff, I, I don't see it being a massive change. It, I know Joe, Joe's going to hate me bringing this up, and I bring it up, bring it up off the air, but it, it's been such a hallmark of my experience in the AV industry. It's not like we're changing it to Panja and completely rebranding everything <laughs> entirely. I wasn't part of that either. It was a big deal. And if they were to do something like that, 
then we have some big marketing challenges ahead of us. And if you're listening to me, Harmon and, and parent group people, don't do that. Don't don't do that. People know AMX. People trust AMX. Just keep doing what they're doing at AMX and doing great products and great service, both together, not just one or the other. And then you'll be good no matter who owns you. It doesn't matter if Coca-Cola buys them. You know, as as long as they keep providing what people are expecting from them and new and innovative things in that world, it won't matter at the end of the day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so, so a couple uh, questions that um, just kind of off the top of my head when, when I first heard this. Should we expect anything different? I mean, Don made mention of it. You know, you, 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 as long as you keep doing the the service and the and the support that you've been doing and and creating the the, the products, um, you should be fine. So the the, yeah. the first question then is, you know, should we expect anything different, um, Joe? Well, you know, it's it's too early to say. I mean, I, I it, it, at some level you would you would like to think that if there was no opportunity to do something positively different than what has been accomplished. So yeah. I'm looking at it as a real opportunity to do more and interesting things, but not so much that it's on a different trajectory, um, but maybe to accelerate the trajectory. Uh, I think if you're close to Harman, you probably realize that they've got just some astonishingly strong positions in overseas markets. And whereas we're a global company, they've got some positions that we just dearly hope we can take advantage of in, you know, they've got a big operations in India and in China and so forth that well exceed anything we have. So, you know, possibly there's some great opportunities to, to you know, extend what we do with our brand into some new territories. Uh, they've got great position in events and houses of worship and other sort of large format AV venues where, again, we've got some position, but, you know, not as strong a position as we do in the corporate sector. And uh, so maybe we're very complimentary there. So I, I think it's not so much an aspect of sort of shifting our strategy as much as a new opportunity to leverage it. Well, it also sounds like that they're going to be able to leverage their position to help you guys grow as well, which sounds oh, you know, win-win. We certainly expect that. Yeah, yeah I, don't, I don't think it's AMX coming in to save Harmon. No, 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 no. And, and, really and it, I, did, <laughs> I, did, I did not mean it to sound like that, but, but you yeah. mentioned you know, the, the, their global presence that – um, you know, you mentioned the, the, the two biggest, honestly, the two biggest AV markets, which, you know, mm -hmm. all you big dumb Americans aren't you anymore. <laughs> you know, it's it's right. it's China. It's India, really. Yeah. Uh, and they do have a really good presence there. And, and, you know, them buying you and then using that presence probably to, to thrust you guys a little further than, than maybe you would have gotten on your own. So Yeah, it gives us access uh, at, a, at a pace that, you know, we really could never hope to replicate. Yeah. And, you know, and, and, and a lot of the new brands that they have, are uh, very complementary. Uh, they're brands that we've interacted with, you know, at a, on a, at a system level in the past. But now here we'll be in channels, many of whom carry both AMX and these other brands. So you know, it, it increases our visibility in the channel, and and as a combined entity, hopefully, will be even more important to some of those channel members. And all of those things are positives. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, again, congratulations to you guys. I, I really do Thanks. hope that it that it works out, and uh, and we'll see you. You know, we'll see what happens at at Infocom. You know. Uh, all right. Let's let's move on here real quickly to, uh, well, my favorite stu subject, and honestly, Don's favorite subject in the whole wide world, OLED. And a couple of weeks ago, my buddy uh, Ted Green from Strategy dot com posted two separate distressing stories. One saying that Samsung was out, one saying that Sony was out of OLED simply because they couldn't make it work. And distressed me. And I even wrote a blog post about it, the fact that OLED was dead. And then what happens is LG comes along and says, ah, nah, we got this. Thanks for thanks for playing, boys. Uh, so, Don, uh, my my fellow OLED lover, uh, who's right here? I mean, is, is LG just playing, you know, you know, we got you know more chutzpah than anybody else, so we're going to make this work. Or are they just not seeing something that Sony and Samsung have already discovered? And is this just maybe a, a feint before they also say, eh, not really, we, we can't make it work either? Well, I'm going to be completely blinded by my, my desire to have <laughs> one of these suckers in my living room. And I'm going to say it's not a feint. They are for reals going to have one, and they just are smarter than the other companies because they figured it out. <laughs> Good for you. I'll, I will join you in your delusion. <laughs> yeah, sheer optimism talking. I've been waiting. I've, I've said this repeatedly on different shows. You know, I've been waiting for this for like 10 years for OLED to become a 
affordable and large screen and you know I want the roll up screen that you can just stick on my living room wall yep. and I'm still waiting don't disappoint me boys come either come up with that or come up with something better but I want it in my house so I'm going to say with yes they're going to they're going to they're going to figure it out or I'll go over there and personally you know <laughs> smack them around until they do yeah that's it Theo. beat them beat them with a you know a, a wet noodle until they figure this out uh yeah. mark, mark where are we at with this is this you know are we are we gonna are we getting there or is this just another you know not really you know uh i i think my my initial response to this was that somebody's got enough money to use this as a marketing tool to separate themselves from everybody else and if it comes it comes and if it doesn't it doesn't and by the time it doesn't where I'll have moved on to something else. Uh, for years, I, I remember sitting at, <clears throat> at consumer shows or any shows and people talking about a great thing. And and uh, any we can make anything we want. The question is, do people want it? And when if they do want it, are they willing to pay for it? And in the end, uh, what they're saying is, we found a way to do this and to make it relatively affordable to get the cost down and bring it out there. And you know, uh, I. I've spent so much time watching, waiting, looking for things to happen that I've just, I've been hurt before, Tim. <laughs> no. I'm not, I'm not buying into it. I, I mean, yeah. I, I suppose it's cool and groovy, but the reality is I've got one of their refrigerators, you know, and they could take some of that money and say, look what we're doing. And I don't mean to minimize it, but at the same time, we, we spend our time as a controls company, as, as a, as a controls uh, programming company, we spend our a lot of our time at the front line of a lot of new products. Yeah. And we're, we're the first ones to bring them online when they do come out. And we watch them fall like, like, and, and so uh, I don't mean to overstate it, but I've been hurt before. We're not going to sit here and plan and try to market something that's not out there. Our business is what's out there today, what the customers are looking for, uh, not what they're hoping to see. Okay. So we'll see. We'll yeah. see. All right. No, that's that's it. You know, I understand. Yeah. I've I've been hurt as well. Uh, <laughs> Joe, <laughs> Joe, we'll leave with you. Where are we at with OLED? Well, well, first of all, as a, as a soon-to-be member of a public company, I can no longer freely issue the kind of public threats that Don does. <laughs> but uh, as much as I might like to, I'm going to have to leave that for the private sector. Uh, I, I think I have to agree kind of with Mark's uh, point that uh, if you want to make it badly enough, you will find a way. And I think the real question here is the cost curve because right. let's say that they are right and that they're making progress on that and they think that they could be kind of aggressively start matching it. The other the other technologies aren't standing still either and so you are, really are chasing uh, you know, a cost curve for the industry overall. So the real question here is not that they whether or not they can make progress. I think they probably could. It's can they make the same kind of progress that the other technologies will be making and therefore stay, reach a volume level that will really let them take a position in the market. And and, and that's tough, right, because it's not just about manufacturing or technology, but it's also market adoption, things related to the, to marketing that will determine the answer to that. So you, you, you better hope that there's enough in, passionate people like you and Don out there to just buy into the faith because otherwise you won't get the volumes needed to, to get to those costs. Well, yeah, that was the, that was the one thing that was interesting. Um, when I wrote the piece, I had to do some research on both Sony and, and Samsung's product projects or uh, their processes of, of making the OLEDs. And it's the fact that, you know, they've got some brilliant engineers and they, and, you know, like Mark said, you've got enough money, you can make anything. Yeah, that's true, except for the fact that, that then you have to make money with that invention right, right. you have to make, right? Uh, it's not. It's great to make one of them, and if you can sell one of them for the billion dollars it took you to, to R&D it, great, awesome. But most of us can't, and so you've got to make the one, and then you've got to make a thousand of them, or then you have to make a half million of them to mm -hmm. make money off of it. And you don't have to just make them, Tim. You have to make them well. You well, have yeah, to make yeah. them work when they get out there. You don't want to roll something this expensive out and have it, you know, fail initially. It's it's to be too devastating. So uh, right. having having the funding is great, but if it's not just enough to make it, you have to make it well now. Yeah, economies of scale and mass production don't count if if it's a piece of crap. Right. Yeah. I wanted to say crap, but I didn't know that I could. Oh, no, you can say crap. Okay. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> and, you know, and, and the marketing. <laughs> 
the, the marketing momentum behind them is important too because I mean you know I personally am a plasma fan I, I I like the depth of field and everything I get with a plasma but I but I accept the fact that they're that they doesn't look good for plasmas right now it's just the, the marketing push behind LED based LCDs right. just seems so good that they're just dominating it and uh, I think it's a little unfortunate I think a great a great technology that is is cost effective may disappear in the end if you build it if people want it they'll buy it and yeah. if they won't they won't and that's what you're talking about right there with the plasma same thing yeah yeah i knew there was a reason i like joe I'm a, I'm, and that's actually why i like <laughs> oleds is because it reminds me of plasma it, the, the colors and the depths and everything it reminds yeah. me a lot of plasma it really does it's not the washed and the lcds aren't washed out but compared to plasma and compared to oled they are significantly less colorful let's put it that way mm -hmm. Um, all right, guys, uh, take a drink, uh, go go, uh, go get a cup of coffee or whatever, because we're going to talk about uh, my, my, my favorite uh, rack manufacturer, uh, and they make other stuff too. Uh, Middle Atlantic Products, they are the proud sponsor currently of all of our Aviation podcasts. Uh, Middle Atlantic has launched a brand spanking new website. If you Go by, check it out. If you don't like it, oddly enough, they've put a little link. You can go to the back to the old one too. So, hey. They give you the most, the best of both worlds. Um, but no, it's really easy to navigate uh, design and um, uh, all kinds of stuff. They've got live chat features, uh, which uh, I got an, an, an interesting email the other day because I misspoke on the last AV week uh, saying that they probably shut down at 5, uh, 5 Eastern time. No, in fact, they don't. The chat feature is available from 8 to 8 Eastern time. So even Mark can go uh, chat them up. Uh, until the end of his uh, his work day. So 8 to 8 uh, Eastern Time, that live chat feature is is available Monday through Friday, obviously. Don't bother them on the weekends. They won't, they won't respond. Um, they have a, a uh, market solution section from broadcast, commercial AV, residential AV, security, all sorts of stuff. So go by, check them out if you would, please. MiddleAtlantic.com is the new website. MiddleAtlantic.com. MiddleAtlantic.com. What great systems are built on. All right, uh, a couple things here yet yeah, before we go. Uh, first of all, Yamaha uh, has added, well, let's, they've added streaming to one of their new boxes, the Yamaha Spotify Connect to Network Hi-Fi Kit. Uh, this, is the, this is what struck me about this, guys, uh, and the fact that you've got a number of different products that are adding streaming services, right? The, they have gone away from, we've gone from LPs to CDs to MP3s. And now to everything over the internet. Um, Mark, when it comes to your, your do, you do more, more commercial than residential. I understand. Right. Uh, but we'll at least, you know, ask the question. Uh, is this where we're going with this stuff? I mean, is that, is, are we going and putting all of our eggs in the cloud? Because uh, that, that is what a, what a streaming service is. It's, it's cloud-based music. So is that where we're headed? I, I can't imagine that it's not where we're headed. Um, uh, even though I've spent most of my time in the commercial world, I dig playing with the toys and uh, you know the advanced stuff on the, the residential side and the, and the, the high-end consumer side. And you know the fact that I I, I found it's an example that where I was a big serious XM guy, mm -hmm. I'm a football guy. I love my football. I love to get all of my channels and stuff like that. I've been totally obsessed with something like Pandora. And so the problem was I was missing Pandora from my car. Well, now I'm not missing Pandora from my car. I've got my phone. It streams onto my car from my phone. And, 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 I, and I, what I'm seeing from Yamaha is just a normal step forward. Now, you know, there may be a day when somebody's going to stand around wondering, oh, my God, where'd my music go? I wish I had my CDs again. But uh, this is absolutely a natural progression. I'm excited to see something like this. I'm excited to start putting it to work. Uh, I think it's a great, great, great step forward. Uh, Joe, when it comes to stuff like this, Mark mentioned, you know, one day we may wake up, wake up and wake, you know, wonder where our CDs are. I, you know, I, I don't know that I, we might do that, but I don't know that our kids will do that. Are, are there are there any drawbacks to this? Uh, not a lot. I mean, the drawbacks that are there, I think, are so trivial in comparison to the benefits that I, I don't see that there's anything but an inevitable move here. The, you know, the ability the flexibility that people have to update their libraries, to access the latest music, to experiment with new venues, and, and not just music, but video is going to be going this way too, mm -hmm. is just so far, um, is, is such a tremendous benefit and joy for most users that I, I just don't see the um, 
a, a real strong pullback. There will probably be a few situations, probably for people who either want the control or they want it in a particular format or a quality level that you can't, don't get from streaming that will want the media itself. But for the mass market, um, the benefits are just there. And, and even the whole notion that, you know, losing it in the cloud, the cloud is distributed. I mean, that if, if the cloud is lost, is <laughs> we're all... Big, we are lost. We're all it's a much more serious problem than you've been experiencing today. Too. Oh, By yes. the way, I was starting to wonder whether you were running a rave uh, uh, show here where you had you didn't find out where it was until the last oh. minute. <laughs> we keep having to chase you. <laughs> that is awesome. The fact that you know what that is, it just, I don't know, it makes me think, think different, more, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Don, Don, um, uh, Joe, Joe mentioned this as well, as well when it comes to video. So wh how long before we get, um, I'm going to say this very carefully, how long before we get dedicated devices that all they do is stream audio and video? Um, don't we already kind of have some of those? Yes, that's why I asked it that I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> It's 2014, dude. This is where we are. I, I, you know, I, I think it's, it's only for the good that this is where we are, I, I don't think we're going to go backwards. Yeah, there'll be one or two people that still want their vinyl, still want their, you know, magnetic media, whatever flavor it might be. But, I mean, speaking this way, it's way more flexible. It's way more portable. Anywhere you go, you can have your music in one form or another or your video in one form or another. And, I mean, come on. I, at the risk of dating myself and, and probably you guys, how many times did we plunk down like $20, $30 for a record or a tape or a CD or a whatever that was, we wanted one song that rocked and the rest of it was just horrible. Yep. And then we had to de shuffle that thing around every time we moved or every time we cleaned or whatever. It, you know, this way you get that song you like from that guy and then you don't worry about it. I mean, well, the other, it, it's way more beneficial. And, and the other part of it too is I can't, one of the things I love about it is I got really tired of getting, you know, Genesis three sides live on the <laughs> album, you know, and, and then getting the cassette, and then getting the DVD. Uh, really, I've, 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 I'm done, okay? Just give me one thing. And if you think about it, uh, I, I, I may put us all in trouble here, but when was the last time you reached in to watch a movie outside of doing it with your children where you went to go get a movie and you reached in your Blu-ray collection or your DVD collection? Yeah. You just don't. You go online, you stream it from whatever, whether it's on, you know, off your Roku or Netflix or Amazon Prime, whatever. This is where we are now, and I dig it. I dig being able to pick what I want, when I want, whenever I want it. I've got to pay a couple of bucks, big deal. I, I dig it, and I'm glad that I don't have to you know, find out what the next format's going to be. You know? Right. Yeah. Well, and you know, you get a lot of added, you know, benefits not just from the convenience, but but all of a sudden these services' ability to direct you to similar titles and other sorts of things that sort of guide you to the next experience. I mean, it's it goes well beyond just how well you enjoy the particular piece you know that you're looking for, but just its ability to kind of connect you in with a whole series of of, of new discoveries. So I yeah. I just think the benefits go on and on and on. It's it's a great it's a great transition, and this is from an old guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, the, the, go ahead, Tony. The discovery aspect is what's awesome about it because yeah. you find so many artists that you wouldn't have heard of otherwise, you wouldn't have found them otherwise. They may not have ever been signed otherwise, but they can make their fortune and their fame on mm. YouTube, on Spotify, on, you know, whatever. Democratizes um, and, media again. Exactly. Yeah. And, Mark, I'm totally picturing you now as Tommy Lee Jones in Men in Black. Like, you see this little gizmo? <laughs> Right, right. Again. <laughs> well, and it's, we you were. know what? It, it, it's, it's funny because Joe, you both bring up a really good point that I've never probably would have paid attention to without a nine-year-old. My my nine-year-old loves listening to something like Pandora, where he has some a, an artist that he likes to listen to, yeah. and then all of a sudden, three days will go by, and I'm he's listening to something that I've never heard before. And well, where did you get that? Well, I was listening to this, and it led me to this, and it brought me to this, um, and it's. It's exposing him to so much more than my collection is going to bring him to, you know. Right. Uh, so it's I, I'm and with you. Know, one of the other great things about music, too, I mean, from always, is its ability to kind of bind you with your friends, right? It was always this common meeting point. And this is a way where literally the, the music doesn't just bind you to your current friend, but it discovers friends who are bound by music because they were bound by the music first, and now you discover, you know, other points of friendship. So I mean, it, it I, I just think uh, it, it really is a tremendous transition, and, and I don't see any going back. 
and I wouldn't yeah. want yeah. to. No, I agree. Yeah, at, at the risk of turning this into an AV social show. <laughs> oh, go ahead. <laughs> you know, the, the, the ability to discover new music that we wouldn't otherwise, thanks to the digital media and things like Spotify and Pandora and stuff, it's, it's a tribe builder. You know, in, in social media particularly, but in marketing, we talk about your tribe. You market to your tribe. You relate to your tribe. And people in your tribe, you inherently trust a little more. And when you find this obscure folk artist from, you know, Croatia that you love and you find out somebody else loves the same obscure folk artist from Croatia, you have a bond, you know, and that sort of thing. It, it can totally help in sales and marketing and reaching out to different people. And it's a fantastic tool for that. So, yeah. yeah absolutely. All right, guys. We have, uh, and, and ma'am, we've had a, an interesting uh Technically difficult day, so we're going to get off here before the internet kicks kick us off again. Uh, real quick, all three of you have have something to talk about when it comes to Infocom, so we'll we'll start with with Mark, and it could, just because you guys are right to left to, on on my screen there. Uh, Mark, you and, and and my good friend uh, Steve Greenblatt are doing something kind of fun uh, on the Tuesday before Infocom uh, it, with regards to technology managers. That, that's exactly correct. We're, it was our first uh, foray into um, bringing the knowledge that we have from the independent uh, uh, controls programming marketplace to directly to technology managers. Uh, we're having a limited seating, 50 seats only, uh, dinner, uh, dinner, drinks. We're doing Gordon Beersh. So even if you're not interested in the technology, we're going to have some really good beer. Uh, dinner, beer, and we're going to bring the best from our individual companies to come and talk about some of the things that are going to be relevant to technology managers, either uh, basic tech tips that are going to be that we can bring to them to make their lives a little bit easier. Maybe some mistakes we've seen made that they can try to work over. It's called Tech Talk. It's going to go on for a couple hours in Infocom. I'm sorry, I had the site in front of me, but I missed uh, it. Here, 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 I got you. I actually, oh, you're so groovy. Oh, you're really, so you know, I, I try every once in a while. Yeah, what, uh, but it's a really it's our first foray, and it's we're really excited about it. So, there's the. Well, maybe. There it is. Yeah, there Tech is. Talk. It's exclusively for uh, technology managers. So it's a place for them to get together with their own uh, colleagues. Uh, no manufacturers, no salespeople, none of that. We're going to get together. We're going to talk about the things that matter to them and get them started for Infocom. So thanks yeah. for the opportunity. To Absolutely. That Absolutely. And, and for, for you and, and, and BMA, where can people find you? Uh, you can find us. Uh, we got an old website, but it's so old. But it's bmasoftwaresolutions.com. Uh, you just call us uh, or, or email me or Twitter me at, uh, at Mark Levecchia. Uh, emails Mark with a C at bmasoftwaresolutions.com, uh, and uh, we'll be happy to chat with you. Okay. Uh, Miss Dawn Mead, AV Dawn. She'll she'll be there at the AV Tweets tweet up, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. Uh, but she's also teaching a social media class. I am. This is the second year in a row that I'm teaching. Well, last year was social media and marketing for the small systems integrator. This year it's more social media and marketing for the small systems integrator. But if you're coming to the show, if you're interested in taking some Infocom education, the class number is IS019, and it's on Wednesday at about lunchtime, 1230 to 2, I think it is. Uh, check on Infocom, though, to make sure. Uh, sign up. We'd love to see you there. And we've got a lot of fun surprises both in the class and with AV Nation planned for you this Infocom. I'm really looking forward to it. I get to wear my AV Nation hat. I get to wear my NetAV hat. And I get to wear my Infocom volunteer annoying person that's everywhere hat at the show. So I'm looking forward to seeing everyone. And um, if you're not taking my class and you don't stop by the AV Nation booth, just but you see me walking past, grab me and say hi. I always like meeting new people at the show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Joe, you guys have one of the biggest booths uh, at, at Infocom. So where can people find uh, – I'm sorry, hang on. Dawn, where can people find you online? Let's put it that way. If not the, <laughs> They can the find show. me online on Twitter, at AVDawn. Um, my company, NetAV, is at net-av.com. And avdawn.com is still in transition. I'm working on redesigning it and actually blogging again because it's been a while, but uh, it does exist, avdawn.com. But more importantly, I'm usually on Twitter, at avdawn. At avdawn. All right. Now, Joe, where can people uh, find you at, at the fabulous Infocom 2014? Well, of course, we'll be at our booth, which is right at the main entrance, although I think they might be moving that a little bit. Um, but you'll find us right up front. Uh, we'll also, of course, sponsor the NSCA Drunk Uncles uh, event, so uh, it's an open event that for everybody at Infocom. So you know, please feel free to come by and join us there. 
Uh, we also have a big presence at UB Tech as well just before in Las Vegas, which is very exciting. So anybody in the higher ed section uh, can find us over there. Um, and if not there, then you can always visit us online at amx.com. We're easy to get a hold of. We love hearing from end users, dealers, and everybody in between, pr uh, press and editors. So uh, we're nothing if not accessible. Yeah, that's that. Is, oh, that is, by the way, yes. we're also teaching an Infocom class as well, which is a great one, and an AVI, uh, AVIT integration. Ooh, very cool. So obviously a hot topic, and we've got a fantastic technical expert there, Paul Ziegler, who will be teaching a course uh, at the session. So, uh, Don, thank you. You remind me about that. That's a great opportunity. Yeah, actually, we're going to have uh, we're going to have Paul on AV Week here in a couple of weeks. Oh, good. <clears throat> I'm assuming I can get the internet working again. <laughs> well, you know what? I bet he could do it. I'll bet, I bet you Paul he could. Get it working. I'll bet you he could. Good night. I just feel like the biggest idiot right now. Uh, it's not my fault. It's my it's my provider. So, uh, real quickly, a couple things. Uh, we've got a ton uh, of things happening uh, in Infocom this this uh, this year. Uh, Don mentioned it first. Is the uh, AV tweet ups? It is the AV tweets tweet up. Um, you don't have to be on Twitter. Uh, it helps to hear about it. But if you're listening to this program uh, and you're not on Twitter, please come by anyway. Uh, it is in room N, as in Nancy, 217 on Wednesday. Uh, it's in N is 217 is the, is the room number. It's not the booth number. But keep that booth number in mind for another reason. 430 to 630 on Wednesday. It is sponsored by AMX, of course. Uh, Middle Atlantic Draper, Vadio, Advanced AV, ASK Proxima, Audinate, AVI Systems, Innovad, uh, AV Help Desk, and Sennheiser. So, uh, and AMX. I said and, and AMX again. <laughs> yes, twice there. Is, there. is there anybody that's entering that event? <laughs> AMX. We all uh, love it. They all, they all love the tweet. But no, seriously, it's it's free food, free drink. So, trust me. They we I, I signed the paper mm -hmm. yesterday. They better they better be they better enough for everybody. <laughs> Good lord! I... Fabulous prizes and fabulous, and fabulous prizes and fabulous, prizes. And fabulous and prizes. Get to meet all of us. And you get to meet Dawn, um, so, which is a fabulous which prize. Is a in fabulous itself. prize in itself. Uh, and and probably Joe, you know, which would also be a fabulous Absolutely. prize. Um, me not so much. Uh, George probably not. Um, and and Don's Don's husband. I almost said Don's wife. That would be awesome. Don's husband, uh, <laughs> that would Harry. Be fabulous. That would be fabulous. So come by if you would please. Wednesday, uh, June June eighteenth. Seriously though, uh, it's it's just, honestly just a good place for everybody to hang out, get to know each other. It we set it up at four thirty to six thirty, just as people are coming out of the booth or out of the show floor and on to the next thing. So you know, um, and, but yeah, come by and, and say hey. N217 also happens to be AV Nation's booth. So, yay, we have a booth this year. Uh, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's, we've been very blessed with it. And uh, it's, it's going to be a place where we're going to have stuff to give away. And uh, we're going to have uh, showing some, some, uh, some other products. And, and we're working together with Commercial Integrator to, to honestly just to bring you the best experience for Infocom uh, that we possibly can do. So you check out the, the booth. If you're not at, at Infocom this year, check out the website. Uh, we're going to have stuff all week. So... Uh, and and you know honestly that's that's kind of what what aviation has uh, the, was birthed from was was honestly Infocom three years ago where we said hey we could we could we should we should start we should start covering this and doing stuff so that was it's it's kind of neat to see it come full circle so uh, check out uh, the website if you would please avnation.tv avnation.tv you'll find this program and a host of others uh, thanks so much for watching thanks so much for listening and thanks so much to uh, to Middle Atlantic for for sponsoring us middleatlantic.com. Middle Atlantic, what great systems are built on. This has been AV Week.